Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about direct versus reflected energy. We have both in our rooms and we need to understand how they both work, how they both don't work together, how they both do work together. So hopefully this will give you some ideas. Direct energy versus reflected. The direct energy from our speakers is that straight line energy to our ears. Okay? So it's the sh we, we know the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So point A, point B, our ears, point A, the speakers, that shortest distance is that straight line energy from our speakers. All right, well, that's not the only energy we get in a room, right? So the straight line energy has to go somewhere. Where does it go? Well, first place it goes is to the sidewalls. Okay, and then what happens to the energy on the sidewall? Well, it becomes reflected. And then it goes back to the listening position, right? So when this reflected energy crosses the direct energy line, that's distortion. So if this is the direct line and this is the reflected line, the point where it crosses the direct produces distortion. So let's go back to our room example. What do we have when it's reflected? We have the primary reflection then the primary reflection travels across to the opposite wall, becomes secondary. This is primary. Then the secondary reflection travels back, becomes tertiary. So we have these, all of these reflections uh, juxtapositioning themselves on the direct energy. And every time they cross that line, we get distortion here. You get enough of them, it's audible. You, one, you might not hear. Two, three, four, yes. So that's why we always say when we treat the walls, the side walls, you always treat from the speakers past the listening position because you got so much going on in terms of reflections. You got primary, secondary, tertiary, just to name a few. What else do we have? Well, the direct energy from the speaker strikes the rear wall, right? Bounces back to the listening position, strikes the floor and the ceiling. And here's our chair. So we got all of these reflections going on. The goal with the sidewalls, let's just stay fixed to those right now because the other surface areas we handle differently, but the sidewall reflections are the most critical because they're for image, centering, depth of sound stage, separation between middle and high frequencies and low frequencies. So these sidewall reflections must be managed correctly with either diffusion or absorption, depending on usage. Let's take absorption now, it's easiest to understand. So back to our room. So when we have the direct energy from the speaker, we have the reflection from the sidewall. We want to slow that reflection down so it's slower than the direct energy. Now there's ranges for that. 10 to 20 milliseconds is kind of a standard that we use, but it depends on usage, it depends on listener preference, it depends on the reverberation time of the room, which depends on size and volume, depends on how much pressure is in the room, how loud you play. There's a whole litany of variables that you have to consider, but in general terms for understanding, we want to minimize the speed, if you will, of this reflection before it hits the direct energy. It's going to hit it. There's, we can't control it, but we can control the speed. We can slow it down with absorption on the sidewall surface. If we have the right rate and level of absorption, we're going to have less interference with the direct energy. Engineers sit near field, and we, we know why they do that, because they want to take the reflections from the rooms out. They want to hear more direct. So the closer you sit to those speakers, the less room sound you're going to hear because they want to hear what's in the mix, not what's in the room. So the bottom line, we have to manage the rate and level of this through absorption to slow it down. So when it starts to cross the direct, it doesn't interfere with it and produce distortion. So that's why rate and level of absorption is critical. That's why building insulation is not a good product to use for this because it's unpredictable. It has too high of a rate and level of absorption and it makes the room too dead. I get calls every day. I say, well, I'll use 703, I'll use 706 and my room sounds too dead. 
because it doesn't have the right and rate and level for music and voice. Music and voice are different. It's not noise. Music and voice are not noise. Noise and music and voice are completely different. Some music I hear reminds me of noise, okay? But the bottom line here is it's different. We hear it differently. We react differently to music than we do noise. Noise, we cover our ears. Music, sometimes we cover our ears, but we also can move close and try and enjoy it. So the sidewall reflections, the secondary and the tertiary reflections, those three have to be controlled immediately in a room. And they must be controlled with the proper rate and level of absorption. We gotta match everything and make it work together so that we have our image we have good centering, we have good depth in our sound stage, and we can hear everything. Okay, so that's the goal. So direct versus reflected energy management is all about that reflection. How do we slow it down so it produces the least amount of distortion with our direct? Hope that helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.